Hello, good people of the internet. It's about time we talked about keyboards. Small keyboards such as my Dacivan 2 Mini, which is a so-called 60% keyboard, are ever increasing in popularity. I do very quickly have to preface this video by saying that I wasn't actually in the market for such a tiny keyboard and was hoping to buy a 10 keyless or TKL keyboard, which simply removes the numpad of a standard keyboard, or perhaps even a 65% keyboard, which includes the arrow keys, page up, down and delete and is only one row wider than my one too many. While researching small keyboards, my main worry was whether such a small keyboard would hinder my work in Premiere Pro and I really didn't want to be switching keyboards depending on which application I was using. So can you edit using such a tiny keyboard without hindrance? Yes, you can, but I want to quickly address the reason as to why I ended up with this, the Ducky One 2 Mini and not a TKL or SF model. Basically, getting a hold of mechanical keyboards with the Swiss layout is quite a challenge. There aren't many of them to begin with. I also wanted Cherry MX Blue switches because my previous keyboard was equipped with Cherry MX Brown switches, which for my liking weren't quite clicky enough. Yes, I could have bought one of the slightly larger options and replaced the switches myself, but that would have cost me both time and money. As to why I got rid of my standard layout keyboard, I wanted to reclaim some desk space and have more room for mouse movements. Just look at how they compare in size. Which one would you rather have on your desk? Oh, and in case you were wondering why some keyboards are missing on the bigger keyboard, you'll see where they went in a bit. Those three requirements, Cherry MX Blue switches, smaller than standard size and a Swiss layout left me with only one single option I could find the Ducky One 2 Mini with RGB LEDs. And that's why it is what takes center stage on my desk now. About the keyboard itself, I really like the build quality and you don't have to install any drivers or resource hungry software to get it working. I definitely don't regret the purchase from that point of view. That opinion changed slightly when I started editing YouTube videos and to a certain degree writing articles on it. While editing, I was desperate for normal arrow keys. While almost all keys on this keyboard do have two functions, I didn't want to hold down the function key every time, I simply wanted to skip between frames. On the whole, it made editing a lot less fun and a lot more tedious. And remembering where all the functions were located was an additional chore. I had to look down at my keys far more often than I did with my previous standard size key. Keyboards. I didn't want to give up on my tiny keyboard too quickly and the first step in resolving my issues was by using something I already had in my possession. My beloved MX Master 3. If you've watched my review of it or you personally use one, you'll know that the thumb keys and scroll wheel can be mapped to any keyboard shortcut you can think of. I first thought of the difficult to locate keyboard shortcuts I frequently use for the two available buttons on the mouse. My goal was to be able to edit while keeping one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. So the two shortcuts I mapped were Ctrl plus K, which cuts a clip in two, and Shift Delete, which does a ripple delete. On this keyboard, the latter function would require me to hit Shift, Function and Delete. With the two buttons mapped, I simply mapped the thumb wheel to the left and right arrow keys. That way I could use it to scroll through individual frames and when the place I wanted to cut the clip has been found, I can do so using the forward button. And to delete a long pause or an unwanted recording, I can use the back button. On the whole, that worked out pretty well. I edited a few of my videos using just the MX Master 3 and my Ducky one too many, but it wasn't long before I wanted more from my setup. I previously uploaded a whole video on how I use templates to speed up my editing, and I've known that I very frequently do the same edits in Premiere Pro for some time. It was finally time to set up some macros. I could have used my Ducky One 2 Mini to do so, but that would have required me to configure a new layer and manually type the keystrokes needed. 
in my experience that can make the macros quite slow to execute and it does require switching layers frequently. But I still didn't want to use the alternative which was running unnecessary software on my aging laptop. And that's when I saw this little thing mentioned in a Reddit thread. At first glance, it appears to be a standard number pad with a bit of lighting and an extra row of keys up top. It also isn't a flawlessly constructed product. Um, if you look closely, you will see the individual layers don't fit perfectly on one another and there are machining marks everywhere. It also doesn't ship with any feet and I had to add some myself to stop it from slipping on my desk. The good news is that when sitting at your desk, you won't really notice any of that at all. On the plus side, it does offer a nice diffused underglow provided by eight non-RGB LEDs on the underside and each key is also uh, individually lit. This special little numpad comes from Zengen YMD Tech Co on AliExpress and I'll leave a link to the product in the description. In my short experience, they've been absolutely fantastic. Despite shipping from China and everything that is currently going on, it arrived ahead of time and in perfect condition. It costs 30 to 40 dollars and you can select from a variety of layouts, LEDs, colors and switches. I obviously went for Cherry MX Blue switches. But what makes this specific numpad so exceptional is the fact that you can program it using a piece of software called Bootmapper. Bootmapper doesn't have to be kept open on your PC and instead the changes you make are written onto the numpad itself. In terms of customization, this numpad has four different layers. There's the normal layer, which when active will function like any numpad. And then there are three function layers. You could, in theory, customize all four layers. For the moment though, I've decided that function layer three will be my editing layer. And I've left the normal layout as it was. To avoid having to continually press F3 when I want to use Premiere Pro functions, I set it up so I can hold the F3 key and then click the top left key and that will keep it in that layer. And that is where the magic happens. The arrow keys I've simply set up as arrow keys and the plus and minus I'm using to zoom in and out of my timeline. Those are both pretty standard Premiere Pro keyboard shortcuts. But the real time savers are my macros. I very often scale my videos to 110% to make jump cuts less jarring. And I used to do that manually each and every time. No more of that nonsense. For now, I have set up two macros which will execute a number of keystrokes by just hitting one single button. I won't be going through the macros in details because that will most likely bore many of you, but if you do want to copy mine, simply pause the video whenever I show them. The macros I've set up will select the clip the playhead is currently hovering over, open the effects panel, tab through the different options and set the clip to either 100 or 110%. I don't know why I ever did things differently. The next macros are rather simple. Just as on my mouse, I've set them to cut and ripple delete the selected clip. Nothing too special there. There's one more macro which is also there to replace a function I frequently use and takes too long to implement. If I ever show an image on screen, such as this one, I like to continually scale it just ever so slightly to keep it from being completely motionless. To solve that drawn out task, I first created a preset which will add a keyframe for the scale function to the start and the end of a clip. The first is set to 100% and the second is set to 110%. Sadly, I haven't been able to find a way of easily adding an effect to a clip, but what I can do is open the list of effects and then search for my preset using just keystrokes. I can then simply drag the effect upwards to apply it. If anybody does know a more elegant solution, please do let me know in the comments. 
Well, this video took a, a bit of a turn. I started out wanting to talk about my keyboard and now I've somehow made it all about my Genius Numpad. So let's talk about the Ducky Mantu Mini before wrapping things up. I absolutely love this keyboard and I'm so happy to have reclaimed my much needed desk space. It's not just a small keyboard, but a small keyboard in a small frame, making it also very suitable for travel. The Cherry MX Blue switches are a dream come true and I wish I would have tried them before I ever got into mechanical keyboards. But editing with this keyboard and a standard mouse, no chance, I couldn't do it. Even writing can sometimes be a pain in the neck when I want to select a word using Ctrl plus Shift and the arrow key. My setup wouldn't be complete without having the numpad I spent far too long talking about and the MX Master 3. If you do go for a Ducky Van 2 Mini for your editing rig, spend the extra $40 on this. You will not regret it. Right, I hope that somehow answered the question I set out to answer. Don't hesitate to ask me anything in the comments and please consider hitting that like button if you did enjoy this video. If you didn't like this video, you can hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. Anyways, it's been just about enough from me for Monday and I will see you in the next one. Bye.